Hi, I'm Rodrigo from GTXON and I know I've been away for quite a while. Sorry about that. I'm gonna get back into my reviews. Had a lot of things going on, but I'm back with a bang because I'm not back with just some controller. I'm back with a full review of the CDJ3000 from Pioneer DJ. I know you've been waiting for this one. You have been waiting for this one for four years, to be more exact. And since uh, the competition picked up the pace with uh, the release of several players from the DJ that were praised for their advances in technology, the eyes, all eyes were on Pioneer DJ to see what were they going to do with their next player. And we have the answer since a few days. At the time of taping of this uh, video, the player is just out and it's called the Pioneer CDJ 3000. The CDJ 3000 is an evolution of the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. It's not a completely new player, but it changes the look and feel and the approach on several key places. And that's important to note because people were expecting something extremely revolutionary to counter the on DJ and to go into a completely different direction. The expectations were extremely high, but you have to know, you have to realize Pioneer DJ has evolved the CDJ line very slowly over time. That's the way they became the industry leader by being consistent in their releases and people, DJs, event organizers, everybody could count on them to consistently deliver quality products over time so that they could grow with them. And these are top of the line, expensive professional uh, DJ players, DJ Meta players, and they need to stay consistent with what they did in the past. So it's an evolution, it's not a revolution. Do I like it? You will find out during the review, but I can tell you already that I do. So the CDJ3000, let's dive into it. And of course, immediately you can see there are a few big differences. The player is bigger, it's sturdier, uh, it's a sturdier faceplate as well than the previous version. And of course, you can immediately see that big, large screen uh, sitting there. It's a large screen, nine inch LCD screen with a uh, um, touch capacity, of course. And yes, there are a few things missing that you might come to expect in 2020 if you're used to tablets and phones like multi-touch and pitching and nudging and all that stuff. It's not happening here. On the other hand, the interface is very, very well made. So uh, as a DJ coming from the old player, you will be immediately at home in this new interface, I believe. And the screen is also brighter. So it means that if you play a lot outdoors, uh, you will have less problems with the sun than on the older players. The jog wheel as well has changed and it has evolved very, very, very positively. In my opinion, this is really a fantastic jog wheel uh, on the CDJ3000. And you have also this enhanced uh, center screen with high resolution display of your track art and a few modes as well. If you're in sleep mode, in vinyl mode or in beat sync, it will show it on the screen. You could expect that Pioneer will uh, evolve to put more stuff there. I would, for, for example, love to see something that you can configure, like for example, put the BPM up there or put uh, the remaining time of the track, like that, that key information that you don't have to look at the screen and, oh, where is it? Just right there in front of you. But okay, you have it on the screen and the screen is quite big. So it's like, what more do you expect? Okay. Another big change is, of course, it's a CDJ, but yeah, there is no CD player anymore. So technically it's not really a CDJ. They kept the name, of course. Why? Because, you know, the old marketing, you need to keep uh, uh, the legacy of the CDJ name. You cannot just dump it and call this top of the line player an XDJ, but technically it's kind of an XDJ player. It's kind of the XDJ 3000, but they name it CDJ because it's uh, top of the line and it's in the CDJ line. But no CD player anymore. If you want a CD player, you will have to look elsewhere. And then the other big change ergonomically on this player are that the hotkey buttons are no longer on the side, but they are uh, spaced out on uh, underneath the screen, as you can see. And you have eight of them and there are hot cues. So immediately, the first thing I, I, I was looking for when I saw the, the press release of the player, I said, oh, did they put performance pads? They didn't put performance pads. So you don't have performance pads there. You have only hot cues. And I think it's a little bit of a, of a, of a missing element. I would love to have seen performance pads there. 
and enable all those performance things that you can do on controllers and also be able to do them on, on the CDJs, uh, you can't. But there are some workarounds uh, in between brackets uh, because there are performance features that are available on the CDJ natively. You don't need the computer for that. You don't need, you don't need the record box for that. You can do it natively on the CDJ. We will go into it. Those are the big changes. And let's dive into the details of these uh, of the CDJ 3000 and look at what we can do. So first of all, the big large screen. So I am working here with two CDJs. Thanks Pioneer for delivering me the full package so I can test everything perfectly. They are connected with Pro DJ Link. So it means that I only need one USB to play from both players. That's not new. That's old. Um, it's very fast. It's a, a very fast Ethernet that we have on this player. So everything is very smooth and quick. And you will see later as, as we go into the features uh, how the Pro DJ Link enhances also the, the the play or the possibilities by uh, displaying multiple waveforms. So when I go to the screen, you see directly the new interface on the player. It's quite advanced and you have this preview uh, preview uh, waveform as well as you have in Rekordbox DJ that you can use to scrub and, and preview the track. So if you uh, want, you can preview that in your headphones and preview the track uh, without loading it. You cannot swipe here, of course, I already mentioned that. But to load a track, you just click on load and you have this gorgeous, gorgeous display with those enhanced waveforms. And you can actually uh, select which type of waveform you want to have. It, it will just toggle between all those different types. So you can have the old school blue waveform, the basic one, or you can go to the three band waveform, which is, I believe, the new one uh, that shows you a lot what's going on in the frequencies of the track. So that's pretty cool. So here you get a lot of information and it's very crisp very clear uh, everything that's out there the the small um, waveform is there and everything is very clearly laid out so let's go back to the browse menu you can browse by artist by album by track by key of course as well um, you can look at your playlists at the history you can look at the matching between the two and you can look at the root folders that are, are um, uh, also on your media. So those are the browsing possibilities. And when you go through, for example, uh, if you look at the tracks, you see that it takes a little while to load the information, but it's quite fast. And uh, this is if you compare it to the CDJ 2000, uh, it's a lot faster. I mean, hot cues. Um, track information, it loads very snappy, very quick. Why? Because this, these players have a new MPU, so that's a new processor that uh, takes care of all that processing in a much more efficient way. So it can do things that previously were not possible on a CDJ. That All that enhances the experience for the DJ, of course. You can also uh, activate and deactivate the preview uh, if you want to do that. Uh, you can also um, sort the tracks by BPM, by key, and there are more options as well. You can look at the info of the track and all that stuff is possible. Uh, you can tag tracks, of course. Um, to tag a track, you simply hit the tag button and then it appears uh, tagged in your tag list. That's pretty cool. You have a shortcut to your playlist as well, so you don't need to go through the interface. And of course, there is also a search uh, possibility to look for tracks. Uh, that is pretty well done and it just previews your tracks uh, underneath so that's pretty easy to do. You also have, just to finish up the screen, uh, you also have the menu that you can access and you have a hell of a lot of possibilities uh, to uh, uh, manipulate there. For example, I can put uh, the LCD to 5 and you can see how it gets even brighter there which is pretty, pretty nice to see. We have a track load. And so, of course, you have the menu. I really went quickly into it, but you hard press the menu and you can see all the different things that you can change on the uh, on the CDJ. We're not going to go in more detail than that. So also you have on the right side linked to the screen, the short, the, a few shortcuts uh, to go back to do the tagging. You can also filter uh, tracks and, and set up your, your settings for your track filter like before that existed already. And you also have your shortcut when you can, you can adapt a lot of settings uh, from uh, the uh, CDJ 
For example, I already showed you the waveform, the waveform position where you want to see the waveform, uh, the Beecham value, you can also adapt it here, it's set to 16, we'll put it to four, uh, quantized value, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So that's pretty, pretty neat. So very complete um, LCD screen with a lot of cool features attached to it. And I really think it's a huge improvement over the previous um, LCD on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. On the left side, we have the USB port to charge uh, your um, USB keys, a USB stop button, also SD card that you can use, of course, with uh, the CDJ3000. There is no uh, other possibility like uh, attaching uh, a hard drive, uh, like in, with the competition, but that's the way it is. And I think in the end, you have uh, with uh, these two options more than enough possibilities to put in uh, some uh, music into your player. Um, you have the time mode, auto cue button as well underneath, and then the slip and quantize buttons. We're going to show how that works when we are playing some tracks. Let's move right underneath and have a look at the hot cues. So as I already said, the hot cues are not performance pads and they're located just underneath the screen. And that's a kind of a controversial decision because many people would have expected for the performance pads to be underneath the jog wheel. Um, since there are no performance pads, but there are hot cues, it makes sense because it keeps everything tight linked to the screen. That's where you need to have them because then you see which hot cues you are uh, using and which not. So setting hot cues, we're just gonna set a few hot cues here. The sake of demo. So we have three hot cues set up and So yeah, you know, there is a risk that you touch the jog wheel when you're juggling with, with hot cues. But I wouldn't call that risk major. <laughs> I wouldn't call it major because um, there is enough space between the jog and the hot cues and the other buttons uh, to avoid it. And as you get used to the player, uh, you will just make less errors when you do that. But you know, it's, it can be a risk. It can, it can still be a risk. And now you will wonder, but hey, those performance features that you talked about, how can you access them? Because you don't do it through the hot cues. Well, you can access performance features uh, through the screen. So for example, you play a track. Slow things down a little bit here. So for example, I have beat loops that I can access immediately from the screen. But if I put on the slip mode, it becomes a roll. That's pretty cool as an effect. I mean, these are these are the things that I would actually have loved to have in the in those pads. So we have something physical to touch, but the screen is pretty good at, at handling. So that's pretty cool. The second performance feature that you have on this player is a key shift. So the key shift does what it does. It will uh, uh, change, shift the key of the track on the fly like this. And you can reset it with the button. Also down. And you can reset it. So that's pretty cool because it means that you can really uh, easily uh, build or enhance drops, create that momentum uh, using those key shift features that are uh, available on the CDJ3000. And then the last uh, performance feature is the uh, beat jump that allows you to jump back and forth on tracks. Back, one, forward, one, back a half, forward a half, four beats. And you have also larger jumps that you can do. So that's also uh, one of the performance features. So you have beat loop, key shift and beat jump. Then you have the whole uh, looping section, which is still kind of the old looping section, but they clearly enhanced it. You still have your old school in and out cue button. So like before, so 
You can, oh, you can now also set a 4-bit loop. Or an 8-bit. And if you keep pressing it, you can reduce it or increase it. Pretty neat. So that's pretty cool. I have the slip activated, so I go back to my track. So that's pretty nice to have those, those two buttons uh, that allow you to quickly set a 4-bit loop like on controllers. Uh, very easy to use as well. Uh, you have also beat jump buttons uh, that you can use and you see that you have the uh, beat jump value set automatically but you can change that value by pressing the call button and you can see on the screen that it changes from 2 to 4 to 8 so what it does it do very simple you move forward in sync with the track it can be a lifesaver Moving forward, you have the toggle uh, knob uh, to do this, to activate slip reverse and reverse. How does that sound? Always in sync with the track and normal reverse that is not in sync with the track if you want to activate that. So you also have the track search and the search buttons that allow you to uh, explore your track or move from track to track. Q and play button, that stays the same. And then we have, of course, the very nice jog wheel that I really like. It's very, um, it's very responsive and it has much less the mechanical feeling uh, from uh, compared to the older models. Some DJs will say, yeah, I, I really miss that mechanical feeling of the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. This feels much more like the jog wheels on the very high-end DDJ controllers like the DDJ 1000 to me. Uh, but it's butter smooth and you know if, if you are a fan of spin bags for example that's an amazing amazing jog wheel to do spin bags it, it's really a pleasure to do and of course you have the jog adjust button that allows you to uh, set the uh, resistance of your jog wheel uh, another little knob is also present the uh, vinyl speed adjust immediate stop and of course that nice slow stop effect that you always want to have at some point you have your tempo and your master tempo adjust button and of course very loose very loose pitch fader which is basically in line with other pitch faders now those are kind of the basic features and the basic overview of the knobs and the buttons Overall, I think it's a very comfortable and nice workplace. There are a few things that Pioneer DJ included uh, in this setup uh, that uses the Pro DJ Link. And the way it uh, works is that the two players, if they are connected with the Pro DJ Link, which is simply an Ethernet cable, you have uh, stacked waveforms from now on on CDJ. Let's start the track here. I can see the track playing here uh, on the uh, second player and I can now easily go and queue up queue up my track like this and you see I can basically mix without my headphones I really love it and you maybe will say as a pro DJ well I don't need all that I mean I mix in my ear and whatever I don't need stage reference but making things easier for DJs is always a good thing you don't need to use these features but uh, if you want to um, focus on other aspects of your performance and you want to uh, make it as easy as possible to beat match uh, well those stage waveforms they are trust me if you never use them they're kind of addictive because it's just you know, it's visual. Who doesn't want to make life easier when you have already so many things to manage when you're doing a DJ set? This is really great. Overall, those are one of the uh, more interesting features, in my opinion, when you have two CDJs connected um, with um, with uh, Pro DJ Link. So let's talk about how you can uh, connect um, with the CDJ3000. So first of all, there is no wireless. So there is no wireless built in into the CDJ3000, so you cannot 
connect uh, uh, wirelessly to it. But for the, you can, but you need the laptop. So you can connect wirelessly to your laptop and on your laptop. No, you can connect with an Ethernet cable to your laptop and on wirelessly to other sources from the laptop, but not from the player itself. Maybe a feature that Pioneer will build in later. But what you can do, uh, on the other hand, is uh, use, for example, uh, Recordbox uh, 6 uh, through hit mode and play directly in hit mode from a record box or you can also connect an iOS device with record box on that iOS device through USB and play directly from your USB device so that's also an option for Serato DJ uh, fans you will also have uh, the possibility to use Serato on the CDJ3000 pretty soon as you can on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2 so on the back side of the CDJ3000 you have audio out, the normal RCA audio out uh, outputs. You have uh, a secured power cable that uh, cannot be removed by accident, which is pretty nice. You have your digital out, and you also have your Pro DJ Link out uh, ethernet port. And finally, you have also the USB uh, port to connect with, uh, as I said, to an iPhone, or you can also connect uh, directly to your computer with it. Great, so that's kind of the rundown of the player uh, as it stands and to be honest if you want my opinion uh, i would say that i have a very positive uh, opinion of this uh, of this new media player it's expensive it is 2299 dollars and that's considerably more money than uh, a player from then on dj um, it's it's more expensive yes but what you should uh, keep in mind is that this is the industry standard and i know people hate that word or many people hate that word hey, industry center who cares I, I need the best technology and so forth but i go back to what i said before it's not all about technology it's not about having the latest technology in your um, in your player it's about how good is your ecosystem and pioneer dj has record box record box is a fantastic piece of dj software it's my favorite piece of dj software to be honest uh, record boxes has so much enhancements over previous versions with the cloud capacity and all that stuff and you know if you are a pro dj and you work in record box if even if you combine performance i especially if you combine performance with uh, uh, simply file management the CDJ just slides into that ecosystem really, really, really smoothly. And you know, if if you are already in there, why would you make a big switch to something else? That's kind of the reasoning from Pioneer DJ, I think. Um, and yeah, these players have been always in that price range. And here, yes, they're removing the CD, but yeah, who needs still a CD slot? And they're adding a lot of stuff. I playing with it for a while now i uh, had it for a few days and playing with it it was so easy for me to get into these players i haven't played it with cdjs for a while and uh, after five minutes i just forgot what i was playing and i was just you know using all the beat loops and, and shifts and stuff and then the connect and the stacked waveforms and then going back it was it's really a, a nice complete solution and I think Pioneer has done a great job in making it more accessible uh, for uh, non-professional DJs, even if they usually will not gonna pay this price, but so that, you know, everybody can just show up on a setup like this and, and, and you know, almost be instantly familiar with it. Let me put it like this. If you come from a DJ controller background and you're thrown in front of these, 10 years ago, you would struggle because it, it was, it was just something completely different. Today, you'll, you'll just, you'll just, uh, you'll just be fine with a little bit of training. You'll be able to DJ a set without any problems from these players. And that's a good thing, I think, because they, they maintain all those high end features that are important for top DJs while uh, also creating, uh, narrowing the gap with the with the digital DJ controller world and and bringing in features that make sense like the stacked waveforms is great for me I mean I, I love that and I think it's really an improvement I really hope you enjoyed this first review in a very long time from DJ Tech Zone and I hope you will support the channel and uh, keep coming back uh, to see more videos um, comment below uh, to tell me how you thought uh, the review went and of course 
comment below to tell me what you think of the CDJ3000 compared to other uh, players uh, that are out there and if you like them or not. And I hope to see you next time for another review. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye bye. Hey guys, if you liked the video you just saw, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the red button underneath this video. Also, if you want to be notified, hit the notification bell so you get notifications in your mailbox about new videos that we uh, release. And also, don't forget to give us a like on this video if you liked it, so that the video gets promoted on YouTube and we get more views from it. That would be nice. Thank you so much for doing all that. Thank you.